Prime Minister Justin Trudeau may be back in very snowy Ottawa, but it seems like he can't get past his Jamaican vacation. The Prime Minister's office initially said that he would be paying for his family's getaway, but later had to clarify that the somewhere around $90,000 stay was a gift from longtime friends. The Prime Minister's office said the gift was cleared and checked with the ethics commissioner, but today Tory ethics critic Michael Barrett wrote to the commissioner calling for an investigation into the vacation, writing in part, if there is any daylight between the picture painted for you and the reality which has borne out, it would seem you could have been the victim of a deliberate deception. And therefore, I believe it is incumbent on you to consider whether the Prime Minister has once again violated federal ethics laws. Let's bring back the front bench to talk about that. Elliot Hughes, Gary Marr, Anne McGrath, and Sabrina Nanji. Elliot, I'll start with you. It's interesting that they decided to do this now. Um, the, the details about the vacation came out last week, and there was some reaction to it from the Conservatives, but now they've submitted this in, in writing to the Ethics Commissioner. What do you think is driving that? Well, I think it's being driven by the lack of other political news, and they see an opportunity to <laughs> prolong the story, sadly, um, that we have to continue to talk about it. Um, you know, I understand. Look, the Conservatives are the opposition. They need to oppose the government. I get it. This is a tactic that they've used in the past. And to be totally frank, I think there is an argument to be made that the PMO perhaps sort of opened themselves up to some criticism here. That said, I actually don't know if this is a, a smart political tactic on, on behalf of the Conservatives. Um, you know, there is an impression, I think, that most Canadians have of the Prime Minister one way or the, uh, or the other. It's, it's, it's good or bad, but I think there are very few Canadians left who have sort of an impression to be made about this guy. Um, what the Conservatives have been doing over the last couple of months, uh, in you know, starting last year, I think has been has been very successful politically in building a case that the government is responsible for the affordability crisis, that they've, you know, that they're the the, the be all and end all of every bad thing happening to Canadians. By combining this Jamaica trip with this narrative, and I think you saw Pierre Polyev trying to do that online today, trying to conflate the two. I actually think that they're sort of they're, they're missing the point. Why bother bringing in this other this other piece? People already know and already have their views about the prime minister and how he vacations and where he vacations and so on. Stick to what's been been going well for you. Focus on affordability. Focus on cost of living. No need to bring in this other stuff because the other thing is here. I actually don't think Canadians really care too much about this story. So I would actually say that that focus on the stuff that has gotten you to this point that has been quite successful in terms of the political hits on the Liberal Party and the Prime Minister, and stop these silly antics because you're wasting everybody's time. Uh, Gary, what do you think about that? I think what Elliot's referring to there is like sort of a political ad that they released on social media that uses the tagline that they've used before, he's not worth the cost. It's sort of interspersing people who are talking about their own struggles, kind of taken, I believe, from news clips with, uh, you know, headlines about, for example, the cost of uh, the prime minister's hotel room somewhere or this vacation. Well, I'd, I'd agree with Elliot to the point where uh, where he makes it that most Canadians don't really care about this. But uh, that's from an ethical point of view. But from a, sort of a political toneness point of view, I think. They can make their point without having the ethics commissioner go into it any further. Let's not forget that he has already been found, uh, you know, to be in conflict uh, with the ethics commission from his trip with the Aga Khan. So, I mean, that wasn't enough to um, sort of topple Justin Trudeau. Uh, so, uh, I'd say uh, stick with what you're what you're what you're doing that seems to be working for you. I, I'd agree with Elliot on much of what he has to say. Uh, but Canadians, uh, you know, I mean, they look at how hard it is to, um, you know, to uh, sort of make ends meet in a time of rising, uh, rising costs on everything, which is going to get even higher uh, later on this year. And they think, well, okay, $90,000 for a place to stay, plus uh, the, you know, the airplane, the security and all of that. Nobody doubts that the Prime Minister, uh, you know, should be having a vacation, but uh, what he's spending on one 10-day trip is, you know, equal to what, you know, many Canadians might spend in an entire lifetime, and they, they view that as being a political tone deafness. Uh, whether it makes sense to go further to have an ethics commissioner investigation into it, it's not, it's not certain to me that there's any additional value in doing so. 
I think that uh, right. I think the point can be made without, uh, as Elliot says, uh, wasting anybody's time. Sabrina, what do you think? Yeah, I think this was straight up a, a comms problem with the PMO sort of changing their their statement on on what's being paid for by who. Um, but I, I do think that politically, the conservatives were going to go this route anyway and just throw it on the pile of, you know, their criticisms that Trudeau is out of touch and elitist. And I, I think that that social media clip that we saw, uh, you know, we're going to expect more of that. But whether that's going to stick to, 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 to Trudeau or even, you know, make him lose vo votes, I, I don't think that's going to happen. This is kind of par for the course, as my co-panelists have pointed out, to, to what we expect from Trudeau and, and how he vacations. But if there is this a steady stream of more information coming out, you know, whether the Ethics Commission actually looks into this. PMO obviously says they, they got it cleared before he went on the vacation. Um, so I think if there is more information, we start to see the numbers behind it. Uh, that, that could be damaging, but I, I don't know if this is the thing that's going to topple Trudeau. If, if I kind of listen to everything that our panelists have pointed out so far, Anne, I guess the question is, is the sentiment around a perception of tone deafness, I'm not saying right or wrong, baked in already after all these years and therefore something like this not politically damaging to the prime minister or does the current economic context change that calculation at all? Well, it adds, it adds to what is already an issue, right? I mean, it's, this, is, this is like every vacation that the PM takes seems to have all of these issues around it. So uh, n absolutely nobody begrudges the prime minister a vacation. I think that that's very, very clear. But the fact that each one seems to be a bit botched in terms of the, the messaging and the corrections and, 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 and actually actual ethics uh, issues with at least the first one, um, it's, it's like, it's, I don't understand, it's puzzling to me that this continues to be a problem for them, that, that he can't go on a vacation and not have it become a big issue. That said, I agree with, um, I agree with the others that uh, for the Conservatives, it doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense because, you know, there is a certain level of it being baked in. And also, the Conservatives, when they go off sometimes on these other things, it doesn't do them any good. They, they are much, they do much better, I believe, when they stick to the affordability message and, 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 that they, and they don't go chasing down these rabbit holes. They don't need to chase down these rabbit holes. Those rabbit holes are there and they're being reported on. <laughs> okay, I gotta leave it there. I have to stick to time and the show's about to end. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks to our front bench, Gary Marr, Elliot Hughes, Sabrina Nanji, and Anne McGrath.